Going after your dream, no matter how big. When you try to hold on to the dream, oftentimes it'll get away from you. But when it's God's dream, it won't let you go. The Dream Center's Matthew Barnett shares how to achieve your dreams on today's 700 Club Interactive. On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to pray for each other and explore topics that matter to you. Watch what God is doing in the world today. Good morning and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. Walt Disney once said, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Well, it's a sentiment our guest knows quite well. 19 years ago, a young man named Matthew Barnett wanted to plant a church in the heart of Los Angeles. He had no staff, no credentials, and no idea how to make it happen. But there was one thing Matthew did have, a dream. As you progress in your calling, I'm talking to people. Matthew Barnett is pastor of the historic Angelus Temple in Los Angeles, one of the fastest growing churches in America. Like his father, megachurch pastor Tommy Barnett, Matthew had long dreamed of pastoring a large church. But when he landed in a dwindling impoverished church on LA Skid Row, he was ready to quit. He says it was then God gave him a vision to start a church that never sleeps. Out of that vision came the Dream Center, a humanitarian outreach for the homeless and downtrodden. Today, there are 180 Dream Centers around the country that serve more than 50,000 people a week. But it's not just a handout. Those who come are asked one question they don't expect. What is your dream? Well, joining us now is Matthew Barnett, the author of the new book, God's dream for you, and it's great to have you here. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> nice to find a dreamer. Um, <laughs> how did all this start? How did, how did you have the dream to begin with? Well, first of all, I was living my dream initially on a secondhand revelation, which basically mm -hmm. means that my father was a pastor. I thought I was supposed to be a pastor, and that's a good, that's a good thing to do. And, but I came to L.A. at 20 because my dad couldn't find a real pastor to take over a little church next to a liquor store. So I'm 20. I get, a, I get a vision. I get a vision at a youth camp at 16, and mm. uh, about one day being in Los Angeles. And uh, oh, really? but I didn't realize it would happen at 20. I thought maybe when I was 30 or 40. But by default, my no, dad. No, no, hold on, I gotta stop you. <laughs> yeah, you said I got a vision. Uh huh. A lot of people won't know what that means. Okay. So w what happened to you? I came down to an altar and I prayed, mm -hmm. and I didn't leave that altar for about six hours, literally. Wow. And God gave me a passion for a city that I've never been to in my life at 16 years of age, and that's when the journey all began. How long were you at the altar? Six? Six hours. I, what I did start, the church do around it was, you? It was actually at a youth camp, uh -huh. and um, I was there in, up, in the, up in Prescott praying and uh, just believing God. And I've never prayed more than 10 minutes in my life because I thought it was hard to pray. Mm -hmm. And uh, that day when God gave me a passion for L.A., all the kids started praying at the altar. You know, you can hear a little bit of chatter still going on. And then it got softer and softer. And then I just said, I'm not leaving until I just get what I get from God. And I got the vision, the revelation, the passion for the city of L.A. And uh, then I got up and that was in my heart. How, how did you know it was L.A.? I don't know why. I just, I just felt a passion for the city. And it wasn't the L.A., the Hollywood, the stars. It wasn't a typical thing that would draw somebody. Mm -hmm. It was just hurting people, people that I felt that were in my spirit that were in great need and poverty. And, and that's what drove me. People in yeah, a lot yeah. of people get driven lost, to L.A. for, you know, lost angels in there. we're going to reach the celebrities and we're going to reach all these people. But right. God, God really spoke to me to reach the people that nobody wanted. Now, now after this experience, did, did you start pursuing it? Or did it, no. did it pursue you? I just got involved in street ministry back home. I realized mm -hmm. my dream was in the avenue of street ministry. So I decided why not get involved locally where I was, my own church. And so I started busing people in from the neighborhoods and bringing them in and ran the largest bus ministry at 17. And, and I didn't know that God was preparing me for this extraordinary journey that we're on now. Wow. Now let's, let's go to the start. And so many people, when they think of, you know, God ordained starts they they think big but you started very very small very small and and it really since i've been pastoring for 19 years since i was 20 um, that's all i had to start with I, I remember when i did get the vision my dad did call me to ask me to pastor at 20. Mm -hmm. i spent three months of la just trying to survive and the food ministry started with three food bags that uh, that i 
was able to pay for out of my little income that I was receiving as a pastor. And so I always tell people, you know, they think that serving is a destination. When I get a building one day, you know, yeah. when I have this massive facility and so their whole life becomes one yeah. day. When I have the money. And the reality is it, 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 serving is a journey. It's not a destination. There's no end point to serving. It's just using what you have right now, loving what you have right now, and realizing that whatever you have right now is enough. And uh, that's what we're trying to get people to get encouraged by is the fact of seeing serving as not a destination spot, but a journey that we're constantly on. In, in your book, you talk about a couple of times where you wanted to quit. Yeah. And, and you actually had loaded everything in the car and were driving. <laughs> what happened? So many times. And I drive down the 10 freeway from uh, L.A. to Phoenix. And then there's a little Dairy Queen, one of the only ones on the 10 freeway that you can find. And I'd stop over and say, God, I'm going to quit, but I'm going to have a Dairy Queen blizzard before I quit, you know. <laughs> and I would, I would eat that thing, and then I would say, okay, God, I, I know I can't give you a year, but I can give you one more day. And so God kept, God's kept, he's played that with me over and over again. Just give me 24 more hours. Just give, and the, but then I found out that his mercy is new every single morning, that he does give you strength for 24 more hours. And, and those become building blocks for, well, decade, almost two decades now. Uh, pastoring the same church since I was 20 years of age, now at 39. What would you tell somebody who, who thinks they have uh, a vision from God? What, what would you say to them? What's the discernment? How do you know if it's from God or it's just from you? Well, if it's from you, it's usually a burden. I mean, burdens come and go. We get burdens all the time for cities, for places. Mm -hmm. But if it's a call of God, it won't let you go. And uh, that's the difference in, in our life. I think a lot of times, many, we're trying to hold on to something because we feel like we have to accomplish something. But when God's dream gets a hold of you, it won't let you go. That the people that he wants you to influence in your sphere of influence to make a difference, it, it, it will not let you go. And that's been the whole vision of the Dream Center. It's things that have found me. I've lived my life to try to serve God's cause, and the cause has tracked me down. Trafficking victims that we're ministering to at the Dream Center, they have found us simply because we've gone in the direction of compassion, gone in the direction of serving, and, uh, and by holding on to the vision of making a difference and serving our generation, we have found that the greatest encounters are the ones that have found us. And uh, when you try to hold on to the dream, oftentimes it'll get away from you. But when it's God's dream, it won't let you go. And that's the big difference. What would you say to somebody that's got that? Mm -hmm. said, it, it, it's, it's, it's dogging me. I, I, can't, mm -hmm. I can't get away from it. How, but they, they don't think they're equipped. They don't think they're able. They don't think they have enough money. They don't have the building. They don't have whatever. What would you tell them? All of those things qualify you for the dream because mm -hmm. it's never been about a human work. It's never been about what you can do. You know, there's something called miracle space, and that's the space between what you can do and what you can't do. And uh, many times we think maybe we're spiritual if we kind of line up what we can't do versus what we can do. And we say, well, you know, I'm just doing what I can do. But the fact is, if you want to give God glory, we've got to have some space between what we can do and can't do where he can come in and get the glory. He can do the work. And that's been the secret. It's always been needing God, you know, having a dream that's bigger than you that requires you to pray, that requires you to seek the face of God. So a lot of times people don't start because it doesn't line up. But if the idea doesn't make sense, there's a good chance it might make history. And uh, that's what people need to realize. It doesn't have to make sense because it's always been about David picking up five smooth stones. It's, the whole Bible, the stories it told our children have been about the element of risk where we have to have God to pull us through. So usually all those things are confirmations that you're ready to take the next great step. Yeah, God inhabits the impossible. Yeah, he does. <laughs> that's absolutely. Where you, that's where you're going to find it. Absolutely. If it's impossible, okay. Uh, if he's called you to it, then, then he's leading you to that. It's wonderful. How, how do people get in touch with the Dream Center? They can go to dreamcenter.org and they can come to serve. They can come to volunteer if they have someone who needs help in recovery or whatever they need. It's all there on the site. and They can come and be a part. And I'd uh, love for them to come out and serve, spend a week, and go out into the neighborhood with us and uh, see what's happened. You know, we've seen crime drop 73% in our neighborhood. And, wow. and uh, the gospel has really made an impact there. And I think one of the differences is, it's earning the right to be heard. And we just believe that whoever stays the longest will win the battle of influence in the community. And that's what we try to do. It's just outlast the liquor stores, outlast the dealers, outlast the gang members. And uh, we feel like we've had a, a stronger voice because of those who have come to join us, to help us to serve, to go out with us, and uh, to make a difference in the community. Yeah, you're offering hope, and, and they're not offering hope. They're yeah, offering absolutely. just destruction. <laughs> and if you're there for people looking for hope, if you offer hope, they'll come to you. They will. All right. The book, God's Dream for You, 
It's available in stores nationwide. Matthew, thank you for being with us, and it's thanks an for honor. all you do. Thank you. All right. Well, coming up, a record exec who produced hits for the Jacksons and Luther Vandross, yet couldn't keep his own life in tune. Hear how he discovered God's dream for his life right after this. A top cop who lived a double life. You wake up thinking about pornography. You go to bed thinking about pornography. Here are the most beautiful women in the world, right? And they're there to meet your every need. Why this officer wanted to die and the three words that saved his life on the next 700 Club Interactive. In 2008, my husband Gary departed for heaven. I was still grieving. And then to find out I had cancer, I began praying, God, how do I do this? Where do I do this? Cancer Treatment Centers of America was the place. Dr. Neelam outlined a plan that would take care of my mind and my body, and she prayed with me. Four Bible-believing Christians were able to pray with them in a much deeper way as they began to really rely upon their faith. At Cancer Treatment Centers of America, we believe in the power of faith and prayer as indispensable allies in the fight against complex and advanced stage cancer. I'm back in Telluride on the mountain skiing. I feel strong and healthy. Advanced medicine and technology. And I am a survivor. The warm embrace of the spirit and the power of prayer. These are happy tears. Please go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. Appointments available now. Cancer Treatment Centers of America, care that never quits. Trying to make ends meet Stuck with no choices I don't like to feed By my side is where you'll stay It will be a brand new day Checking up is easy to do Here's to freedom for me and you By my side it's here you'll stay It's a brand new world today Bernie Miller was a music producer who blew through money as fast as he made it. He says he was empty inside. Until one morning, when he was alone in his hotel room, and he turned on the TV. Bernie Miller's love for radio started when he delivered the newspaper to a radio station in Baltimore. He caught the attention of James Brown at WEBB, who asked Bernie to record a public service announcement. Bernie was only 15, and he was hooked. I was a disembodied voice. I loved being behind the microphone and not being seen, and, and doing things, uh, saying things in a certain way that would uh, encourage people. By his 20s, Bernie was living out his wildest radio dreams and working for a top three market in Chicago. He was swept up in a whirlwind of success, money, and glamour. My lifestyle uh, when I was uh, in the radio world was uh, fast lane. It's filled with a lot of drugs and, uh, and a lot of uh, groupies. Uh, a lot of money too uh, can be made and what you do with the money is one thing and what you do with the groupies is another thing. It was uh, you know, calling uh, prostitutes and uh, having uh, people come over and you know, using, abusing drugs. And uh, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and I had to uh, get acclimated to it. And so when that happens, you, you use things to give you a boost. And, uh, and I used cocaine to give me a boost. I used uh, marijuana to relax. You know, so it's such a vicious cycle. Bernie's career skyrocketed. He was offered a job in New York, another top three market. During that time, he began to write music with credits such as I Can't Stand the Rain, made famous by Ann Peebles and Tina Turner. And I remember the royalty check that I got, it was like uh, $19,000 and uh, I'd never seen that much money at one time in my entire life. And, uh, and I, I used every drop of it on drugs. In 1987, Sony Records offered Bernie a position as VP of A&R. His roster included Michael Jackson, Luther Vandross, and others. His six-figure salary and million-dollar budget was all he thought he ever wanted. But one day, Bernie realized that it wasn't enough. Uh, I woke up after being there for a year, and uh, I said, is this it? Uh, I worked all these years to get here, and there's something missing. And uh, there was a void in my life. And the night before, I knew I was watching a, uh, an X-rated movie. 
I knew that, uh, and I, I don't know if I rolled over on the remote control. I don't know what happened, but I, I woke up uh, that morning, and, um, and I turned the TV on, and uh, it was the 700 Club, and there was someone on there saying, there's someone who is uh, struggling right now, and you are at a point in your life where you have uh, made it, you've done all the things you wanted to do, but there's something that's missing. And uh, I want to tell you that that something missing is, is Jesus. And uh, he purposely put a Christ-shaped vacuum in your life. The next thing I knew, I was on my knees uh, asking the Lord to come into my life and, uh, and to save me. It was a total personality change, so to speak. I found myself uh, not wanting to do the things that I used to do. I asked the Lord to take the, the, the taste of cigarettes and alcohol and any other substances uh, out of my uh, taste buds. And he did. And uh, as I think about that moment, um, things has changed in, in my life. After Bernie gave his life to Christ, he found it difficult to continue his work with the record label. The next year, Sony decided not to renew his contract, and Bernie Miller moved to Chattanooga to become a Christian radio announcer. Eventually, Bernie attended seminary and became a full-time pastor. All the gold records and all the famous people that I've known uh, mean nothing to me uh, compared to uh, the relationship that I found by watching the 700 Club. And uh, anyone who's uh, hurting, all you have to do is want Jesus. And uh, when I was at the top of my career, uh, didn't really need anything, uh, but there was a void in my life. You know, you have a lot of money, very successful, but all those things don't mean anything to you. Uh, at the end of the day, you still have a void in your life. And that void is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's that same boy that I had. And you won't be happy until you do what I did. And that is ask him to be your Lord and Savior. You can do Benny's story. You already know that if you follow the things of the world, if, you, if, you, if you're chasing success or money or, or career or whatever, you know, those things it can't be good. But so often you hear from people that have made that, but they don't have God in their lives. And it's empty. And they go, is this all there is? Is there any meaning to what I'm doing? Is there any purpose? What am I here for? What's my destiny? Where am I going? Well, Solomon talks about this. And he talks, just as Bernie talked, that there's a void in your life without God. Solomon said that God has put, put eternity in our hearts. And we're longing for that. We're longing for that eternity to be filled with the eternal one. We were uniquely made to have a relationship with God where he would come down in the cool of the evening and talk with us. That's what he wants. He wants to have a relationship. He wants you to know him. And you can be like Bernie. You can start chasing the things of the world and say, okay, well, I'll... I'll, I'll put off God. But you ought to know by now, regardless of the success you have, it's not going to be filled until you have him in your life. That emptiness won't be filled. Now, if you want this, if you want to meet Jesus, all you have to do is ask. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door. And here's Bernie. He's empty. He's wondering, what have I done with my life? All the success, all this money, all the women, all the drugs. It's all meaningless. And then he finds meaning because he happens to watch a television show where he's told, you can meet Jesus today. You can have him in your life. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will give you peace. He will give you joy. He will give you purpose. And it's wonderful. It's a great adventure. Don't believe the lie that there's all these things you have to give up. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, here's the prayer for you. Jesus, if you're there, if you're real, if you're the Savior, if you're, if you're my Savior, 
Could you come into my heart? Could you be real for me? Could you do what you did for Bernie? Can you do that for me? And if you pray that with all of your heart, the Bible says that when we seek him with all of our hearts, we'll find him. All you have to do is open that door and ask the question, will you come in? And if you do, he'll answer it. And he'll be your Messiah, your Savior. And what you've heard other people talk about, how it changed their life, how it made such a difference for them. That can happen to you. If you want someone to pray with you, walk you through, you say, I don't know how to pray this. There's somebody that is available for you. It's a toll-free call, 888-777-1999. And just say, I want to pray to ask Jesus to come into my heart. I want to meet him. I want to know him. I want this relationship he's talking about. It's toll-free. Call it now, 888 888- 777-1999. When we come back, a farmer who had no farm. Hear how he got one for free. Up next. One November day in Dallas, 1963. The country changed forever. A new book explores that fateful day, minute by minute. Author James Swanson uncovers the facts of the Kennedy assassination and sheds new light on one of the darkest days in American history. End of Days by James Swanson. On the 700 Club, next. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out-of-control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created The Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. If you've heard about The Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the total transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the total transformation free. Turning 65 is a milestone. But no doubt you have been buried by Medicare supplement offers. All 150 Medicare supplement companies will overflow your mailbox prior to turning 65. Most likely confusing you and leaving you wondering where to turn. Good news. There is a toll-free hotline that can help cut through the confusion. 1-800-MEDIGAP. The trusted toll-free hotline. 1-800-MEDIGAP can help make sense of all the options offered. Taking the guesswork and frustration out of the equation. 1-800-MEDIGAP. 1-800-633-4427. CBN TV on CBN.com. All the video you love in one easy to use location. After growing up in a family of farmers, his dream was to harvest crops for his own family. There was just one problem. He didn't have any land to farm. Since I was born, my parents were farmers. As I grow older, then I will go and work the farm by myself. I wanted to be farming, I wanted to farm, but I didn't have a land. I tried to do businesses here and there. I tried to work at people's houses like 20 years before I can come up here and find something of my own. They asked me in the Operation Blessing Office, what are my skills? And I told them that I know farming. The OB office in Nyame asked me to come and stay here by the clinic where they have a piece of land. So I came and stayed here and attended uh, the goats and the cows. And then uh, they built me this house here for me to stay in. 
They bought me a pair of cows, and uh, I raised those cows. So I raised those cows, and I sold them after a few months. And the money could uh, allow me to buy three more. As I was doing that, I was paying back OB for the money they invested in the cows and the cart. With the money that, that I paid back, they took that money and added some to buy me a rice field. And that's how I got this rice field that I'm working on right now. Obi has bought me a piece of land, and that's big. And uh, I'm going to do everything to prove it's possible to help somebody. Personally, I want to thank them for everything they did for me. It was difficult for me to get 50 cents to buy food for my family. And now, not only that, we own our own cows, we own our own cow carts, and we're going to own our own rice field. And now I can provide rice for my family and food for my family. Be, be a member with us, join with us. A portion of every gift to the 700 Club goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people around the world. That story from Niger, we're doing farming for the Maasai tribe in Kenya. Uh, we're doing it throughout Africa and India, Indonesia, the Philippines, China, Haiti. We're doing it in your name when you're a member of the 700 Club because a portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing. If you're not a member, join with us, 888-777-1999, or just log on to CMEN.com. Well, this is 700 Club Interactive, where we want to interact with you. And we've got an inbo inbox question from Janice, who says, I lost my job and have been struggling to get a new one for almost a year now. If God closes one door, will he open another? How do I recognize that door? Well, Janice, recognizing that door is always sort of the question. Um, the, the Bible says, and it's in the book of Revelation, uh, these are the words of Jesus, the, the doors I open, no, one, no man can shut. So does he open doors for us? Yes. Does he open doors of opportunity? The Apostle Paul said oh, an effective door is open for me for ministry. So, you know, the, you, you look at these opportunities and, and you just want to say, yay, God, let's, let's, let's go to that. Uh, but you sound a little disappointed and, and you're, you're, I, I bet you're wondering, do you, do you switch careers? What are you looking for? And here's my advice for people that, what's, what's my calling? What's my purpose? And there are a couple of steps here. Uh, one is a test. Is it good for people? Is what you want to do, is it good for people? Second, is it good for God? You know, is, is God in this? Does, does God's kingdom, uh, is it going to expand because of this? And then the third is, is it good for you? You know, so often we, we in thinking we're working for God, we've got to sacrifice everything. Well, Jesus is the sacrifice. All he's looking for us is obedience to obey what he's asked us to do. So if it fits those three, three things, then yay, you're on the right track. Now we have opportunity and gifting. And you've got to be honest with yourself. Are you good at it? You know, a lot of people want to be musical performers, but then you've got to ask the hard question to people around you, do you think I can sing? <laughs> and if you can't sing, well, then you've got a problem. So it's, it's, it's the opportunity and then the ability. And then the last part of this test, what's in your heart? And in your heart, you'll find that God placed that there, that the desires of your heart, I'm not talking the silly stuff that you want to own a yacht or you want to have a million dollars, that kind of stuff. What's in your heart that satisfies you, that you dream about, that you think about, that you think if I could do this, th this would be wonderful. And, and does it help people? Does it expand the kingdom of God? And is it good for you? If it fits all of that, well, then I would say that's an open door and you need to run to it and put all of your effort into achieving that dream. The problem with dreams uh, is the unfulfilled ones. And the number one reason is you lose heart and you lose hope and then you give up. We leave you this word from third, third John. Beloved, I pray for you that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. 
God bless you. We'll see you again.